With Open RAN being arguably the hottest topic in the telecom sector right now, I'm talking to Andre Fuich. He is CTO at AT&T, President of AT&T Labs, and Chairman of the ORAN Alliance. So Andre, what does Open RAN mean to you and the industry, uh, and how is it different from Virtual RAN? Thanks, Ray. It's great to be here. Um, great question. I get it a lot. Um, actually, Open RAN and uh, VRAN, or Virtualized RAN, are very different concepts. And they're often um, mentioned together because they are actually very complementary and synergistic with each other. Um, you know, in the traditional approach, uh, the, the RAN is built, the radio access network is built in a, a, a very modular way, and they're split into components. Uh, they're hardware boxes, they're software modules, and there's a lot of details between the interfaces that uh, connect these components together. And these are typically vendor proprietary. Um, in Open RAN, um, we are seeking to uh, open up these various components and the way they interact and interoperate. And, and what's very important here is having a very consistent and standardized architecture to how you do this, uh, to ensure that you can have this interoperability, if you will, uh, between different components. And where virtual RAN comes in, um, that's really taking advantage of how you can actually run a lot of the software that runs on these hardware implementations in a much more uh, general multi-purpose uh, hardware way. And again, a lot of this here is designed to open up the design and the architecture of these radio access networks so that we're not so locked into uh, these traditional very uh, proprietary approaches that have been out in the market for decades now. And so um, when we look at Open RAN and VRAN, we, again, we see them being very complementary to each other. Um, and we see a way here that uh, we can drive much more innovation, much more competition uh, into this new evolving ecosystem. Okay. Um so are there and should there be different flavors of Open RAN? Uh, and just how tightly controlled are the specifications related to Open RAN deployments? Yeah, it really depends on how you define flavors. Um, uh, an Open RAN with a well-designed architecture and, and interfaces will support a wide range of deployment flavors. And, you know, to meet the varying needs and strategies of you know, different operators, as well as different network applications uh, within a single operator. So it's, it's really important um, that the open RAN specifications support a broad set of capabilities and configurations. Um, on the other hand, if there are um, a multiple of competing architectures and competing interface definitions, um, the, the, the problem you have is you get fragmentation and you get dilution and, um, and that, and that can, you know, uh, go against you, especially if you're trying to achieve, um, you know, high scale economics and things of that sort. You know, we saw this back in 3G, right, with, uh, CDMA and GSM, uh, as sort of competing alternatives. Now, fortunately, the industry um, coalesced around one. And that's really what we're trying to do here um, is to make sure that we can coalesce around one general standard that can apply, that everyone can adopt and apply and get the benefits of the scale and the momentum in the ecosystem. So Andre, what can be done to ensure conformance to ORAN Alliance specifications? I mean, how can the industry avoid that fragmentation you've just mentioned? Yeah, I mean, the decision on whether or uh, to adopt or not uh, the ORAN specifications is really up to these individual operators and suppliers out there. You know, our goal in ORAN is to make the specifications as inclusive 
as capable, as interoperable as possible. Um, that's why the Alliance has over 27 operators, uh, as well as over 200 industry uh, participants all throughout the supply chain. And really the idea here is to get everyone in that community uh, to, con to contribute uh, specifications, uh, again, in a clear, united way uh, so that the entire architecture can benefit from it. Um, there's a lot of work that uh, has gone on and that's involved in creating a good set of open RAN specifications. Um, and ORAN is also working with other organizations, you know, as an example, the Small Cell Forum, uh, the Open Networking Forum, uh, TIP, uh, as many others, to get as much commonality as we can uh, so that, um, you know, depending on the implementation, depending on the operator scale, uh, sort of the you know, the brownfield network that they're already dealing with, or perhaps they have a greenfield network. We're trying to do things in a way here uh, to make uh, ORAN as adoptable and as easy uh, as possible. Um, so that's really um, what we're trying to do here is to balance the flexibility here into coming to a common standard uh, that everyone can uh, work into their implementation. Okay, great. Um, and uh, what is the relationship between what the ORAN Alliance is doing and the work of the 3GPP? Yeah, so one of the basic principles of the ORAN Alliance is to be compatible with 3GPP uh, wherever possible. Um, in areas where 3GPP has, has specifications, uh, uh, it, it's clear that maintaining good alignment with 3GPP is one of our top priorities. Uh, in areas where 3GPP uh, uh, has, doesn't have standards, uh, ORAN is really trying to uh, align those standards organizations. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, the small cell forum is a great area. Um, ORAN is adopting a lot of the small cell forum interfaces so that we can drive, again, a good, healthy uh, ecosystem and not have to reinvent the wheel and take advantage of where there's, you know, good applicable work that's already been done. Um, also, you know, there are some cases where uh, the ORAN working groups may have found some errors in the 3G uh, PP specifications or certain capabilities that uh, could be more useful uh, if opened up in a different way. So we are uh, seeking out those opportunities as well within the Alliance. And, uh, but yeah, really there's a lot of work going on and a very tight collaboration with 3GPP and that community as well. Okay, excellent. Um, so turning to AT&T now, uh, what is AT&T's open RAN strategy? Yeah, so AT&T, you know, we've uh, been at the beginning of a lot of different open initiatives across our uh, network domain. And uh, so this is nothing new for us. Um, uh, for example, we've been pushing a lot of uh, openness and disaggregation into our packet and routing infrastructure. Uh, so there's a whole uh, numerous projects, open source projects, um, open architectures that are going on uh, in that area. As well as we've got a lot of open initiatives going on in the transport space as well. Um, so really when we approached the RAN, um, we took a very similar playbook uh, as we've done in transport and in uh, switching and routing. Um, our strategy is really to adopt and implement uh, open RAN as much as we can into our network uh, as it becomes available. Um, you know, we're one of the, again, early pioneers in this. Uh, this is uh, one of the reasons, you know, we co-founded the ORAN Alliance was uh, we felt that there was strength and power in numbers here. Uh, we, we knew we couldn't just do it alone. Um, as we all know, uh, the RAN space has had a lot of 
uh, technology and vendor lock-in over the decades. Uh, so it really was, was going to take a lot uh, to get an open approach. Um, it's not an overnight transformation. Um, uh, we've been conducting numerous uh, tests and trials and uh, in-production implementations of it. We're actually very pleased with what we're seeing. We're very pleased with the um, results uh, of these trials. And we're very encouraged by the ecosystem and the number of players that keep coming to the table wanting to be a part of this. And we believe that the more we can bring to the table here, uh, we'll lower the entry barrier to allow disruptors to come in. Um, we also believe that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity, not just to drive more efficiency into the RAN in terms of how we utilize the resources, but also how to drive uh, a much better user experience. And by opening up and exposing the capabilities of the RAN to uh, machine learning and AI capabilities uh, is a great example, because we all know AI in the future is gonna be a big part of you know, all these networks that we're building and deploying. And we feel that um, uh, the Open RAN Alliance and a lot of the architecture specification work that's going on is gonna, again, bring a much more powerful ecosystem to the table here that uh, we can use to drive more value to our customers. So you mentioned some of the benefits there, but is there more that AT&T and other operators can gain from deploying Open RAN? Yeah, so I think, you know, it certainly comes down to uh, higher efficiency, uh, building a richer ecosystem, uh, generating greater innovation velocity, um, enabling and introducing uh, machine learning and AI uh, capabilities. All of this is going to result in uh, you know, lower total costs and providing better services to our customer. And this is uh, really important, um, especially when we talk about what 5G is doing. If you think about what are the big differences between 4G and 5G are, um, one is 4G has been, you know, primarily about connecting humans, uh, smartphones and tablets. And of course we have internet of things that are emerging. Uh, 5G is taking that to the entirely new level. And it's gonna be more and more about connecting machines and the devices and all the connectivity in our lives. And so all these different types of connections are gonna to have to have a much broader array of capabilities. And again, we think an open architecture is going to be key to meeting those deme uh, demands and needs. Okay. So do you, do you think that Open RAN and other disaggregated networking models is ushering in a new era in telecoms? Yeah, I think it's absolutely uh, opening up a new uh, era because by going open, um, it's driving a lot of what was so proprietary and locked in in a very small contained ecosystem. It's really opening it up to the cloud world and the hyperscalers. And as we know, those are uh, ecosystems that have huge developer communities um, and many new applications and uh, opportunities to do many different things with, with the RAN that we haven't seen before. And so I think, um, you know, just as we've seen in the operator, or excuse me, in the, um, in the cloud space, I mentioned earlier about uh, packet and uh, routing systems, um, how some of the large hyperscalers are actually building their own open implementations. In fact, at and is doing much of that ourselves. Uh, that has, you know, again, opened up new capabilities, um, new ways of taking, um, you know, which has been much of a commodity asset 
uh, into a differentiating uh, power. And that's something we hope to see by uh, Open RAN opening up uh, more and more is to bring more capabilities, um, not just to operators, but to the end users. And you can see this um, in 5G in the enterprise, uh, especially in private networks and how this kind of equipment can be utilized better to meet the needs of uh, customers and what they need to get done. So I'm, I'm very bullish on this. I think um, anything we can do to drive more innovation and more competition is all good. So do you have any key messages for the industry about Open RAN? Yeah, the, the key message, and I mentioned it earlier, I think um, the more we can stay aligned um, and keep the standards, uh, the standard implementation as unified as possible, I think really will benefit uh, the entire globe here. And, I, you know, in the, these days and times with all the things going on in the geopolitical space, there's, you know, there's always these sort of temptations and forces to sort of fracture things. Um, I, I think uh, that will, uh, uh, that would be a big negative. I think the more we can stay aligned with the global standards um, and push uh, our implementations and stay together as a community, uh, I think the, the better off uh, everyone will be. And the other thing I would say is, you know, this thing takes time. Um, this is not going to show up all at once. It's not like, boom, there's going to be this magical release or uh, that goes out and, and all of a sudden everything is open. This is going to be uh, uh, an evolution and it probably won't be as fast as I would like to see it. But I think the more and more we can bring to the table here, the more people we can get behind it, uh, the faster it will go. So again, I encourage uh, those that are getting into this uh, is to stay unified. Uh, let's keep this as a global standard um, and let's uh, keep involving and, and pushing to drive the ecosystem uh, to a much larger base uh, as we can. And can Open RAN be a catalyst for startup innovation in the telecom sector? And are, are there any new ways in which the industry, including the operators, can support startups to, to give them a, a better bedrock for the future? Absolutely. I think if you look across uh, the ORAN Alliance and you look across uh, the almost dozen working groups that are uh, underway, and they're looking at all different aspects uh, of the architecture. Um, there's a great opportunity for disruptors, uh, uh, you know, smaller startups to get involved. And I would encourage, um, you know, again, I mentioned earlier, we, we really trying to lower the entry barriers here uh, to let new innovation in. And I think one of the big areas, um, you know, where uh, folks can get involved is you know in in these enterprise type applications where you have campus environments if you will that are trying to figure out how to build better wireless uh, networks um, by again taking advantage of this openness these interfaces these specifications uh, taking a look at some of the work uh, specifically um, what's going around the intelligent controller work uh, to expose more data, more visibility of how the network is performing. And then of course, exposing more control over that network. I think that's gonna open up all kinds of new and innovative applications for the future. So um, again, I really encourage anyone out in the ecosystem to uh, contact us at the Alliance here. Uh, we're, we have big, broad, open doors and we're really excited about the future. Okay, excellent. Well, Andre, it's been a pleasure to speak to you today. Thanks for taking the time and look forward to hearing from you again in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ray.